with no canvas. Subscribe right now. But looking back, it's so simple. It's so simple. You just have a bunch of people here that are gathered. They're all creative people. They've been gathered in one place. They're taking the time to demonstrate what they are about, what they think, how they feel, how they express themselves in art, through their life as well, all their expression, ma making bonds, forming relationships, just having a good time. There is a... Huh. I wonder if Ted's going to talk with her. There's Rich. And there's Tracy and Tom. Yeah, Beth was over there. I maybe Ted doesn't know Beth by this time, or maybe oh, here we go, over to Beth. And there's Philippe. He was our upstairs roommate at 132 Landville the first year, which was 1983. I don't know why the microphone's not working today. I guess I didn't have headphones and I didn't know at a time. It's So, what to do, where to go? Let's look at the faces, see what people are up to. Free beer. Yeah, that was kind of nice, free beer, you know. this day. More so than usual, because like I was saying in the other video, the opening video, the video camera's new to these folks. They've never even been in front of them before most of the time. And they're already creative individuals, outwardly expressive individual, a lot of them anyway. And um, you know, they're all fired up. Free beer, last day of school, dancing, having a good time. People really, really fired up. A lot of energy in the air on this particular day here. And spring had come. The long, cold Baltimore winter was over. It's a beautiful day as well. And, uh, you know, anywhere you live where the seasons are, there's just a lot more flux throughout the year of energies and different. Uh, everything has its time. And I currently live in Orlando, Florida, and of course we don't have any of that here. You know, the changes are very, very subtle. A good equilibrium the whole time going around here. But yeah, people were fired up. They were ready to move on with their summer. I think Ted might have been going out with her at the time, or about to, or just finished. <laughs> I can't remember. Oh, these were nice stairs. I used to have these these shoes that would get really slippery walking around this marble and everything. And I had this special way of going down the stairs. I really liked it. They were all curved. And I would just stand on the tips of the stairs and slide all the way down in a standing position. I wouldn't walk down the stairs. I would slide down the entire stairs on my feet like it like it was a big hill. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Not few, not very many people had thought of doing that or ever tried to do it, but every time I went down, that's what I did. It was a lot of fun. You could do that in the basement, too. They had stairs like that down there, too. Yeah, I'm about six foot three, so I have a size 12 foot. And uh, I don't know if you had to have a large foot in order to do it or not, but you had to have smooth tennis shoes. 
This building was great because it was, um, they really took some pains to, to, to do it, put them together right, like in the olden days. Large, large rocks, stones carved into the outer structure, and then some of the finer details on the inside. Good thing, too, because it really holds up to the abuse. You know, when you think about it, these days, you know, buildings are just thrown together. Maybe not the large city buildings, but even then, a lot of times, they just figure, oh, things are going to get worn out. Let's go ahead and just uh, put some impermanent floor surface and whatnot, and we'll just we'll replace it every 10 years or repaint or whatever, you know. But I kind of like when they used to build things to last like this, you know, and things would get cracks in it. You can see some of the cracks in the tile down there, the floor tile and things like that. And it would still have to be renovated every now and then, but it would really hold up. And it just uh, just really gave an attitude like, when we're going to build something, we're going to build it to last. And it's, it was a privilege and a pleasure to attend school and build like that. It made you feel like, okay, they've at least chosen something that shows their point of view for their school, you know, we're in this for the long haul, we appreciate things that are built to last, let's see what you guys do with your artistic instruction, where does this all go, where does this all lead, it'll be very hard to trace all the students in this video, see where they all went, my hope is that some of them will come and see this and uh, reacquaint themselves with me and others, start using some comments here on the YouTube site and maybe Facebook or other places on the internet get back together you know I, I think that a site should start up like virtualreunion.com or something like that you know uh, where everybody gets on there gets a video capability puts in their name makes all their contacts from their history you know the talk about meeting at a specific time, or maybe it's a bulletin board, maybe it's not even meeting at a specific time. I've been using message boards on the internet for a long time now. And, um, you know, basically just have a reunion. I mean, why can't everybody in this room, or everybody in this room that's interested at least, be able to do something like that? Well, somebody's going to make a mint off of it someday. Could be me, but that's not my goal. I'm not set up to do that type of thing anyway. I could do it, but it's an idea. Mark my words, I believe that somebody will do that, it will come into flourishing, and uh, would it be great? Because I'm looking, I'm sitting here, you know, it's like Thomas Edison said, you know, discontentment is the necessary ingredient of progress. Uh, I'm looking at something like this, I'm saying, Ugh, why can't I just take that person and reach in that video and grab them out and say, hey, how you doing today, where you at, what you up to? You know, put them back in there. Grab the next one. Have a little conversation, you know. So, uh, I wouldn't say it's discontentment, but my inability to do that is discontentment. My inability to know where all these people went is discontentment. And if I'm experiencing it, other people must be as well. And if they're all experiencing it, somebody will come along and they'll say, Hey, I can solve these problems for these people. If there's enough common people thinking these same common things, I'll uh, create a website that allows them to get together again and have a feeling or a sensibility of that and uh, I'll make money. I could do nothing but that for the rest of my life and I'd be just fine. But I'm doing other things. I'm raising my kids, doing video production, I'm doing costuming, I'm doing a lot of different things with my art. I never really became an entrepreneur or a businessman type, but if I was going to be a businessman type, I'd probably do things like that. As an artist, we have to get used to having ideas. Great ideas sometimes. Crazy ideas other times. Worthless ideas other times. Just keeping the energy flow going. And uh, we have to get used to just not acting on every single one of them because we just can't. There's not enough time, there's not enough energy. Uh, there's a quote I heard the other day, I believe, it said, Wisdom is knowing what. Part of wisdom is knowing what to disregard or leave out. So as we move forward in life, that's important. Not just what we're interested in to gravitate towards, but also what we know we just don't have the 
energy for, or somebody else will be a better suited person for it, or... With no canvas, subscribe right now.